Emerson Nangagwa, of course, being declared the winner of Zimbabwe's presidential election with 53% of the vote. His main challenger, Nelson Chamisa, had secured 44% uh, of that uh, vote. So you would recall now, Savia Kusukuwere is one of uh, the late and former President Robert Mugabe's cabinet ministers. Kusukuwere was disqualified uh, from contesting in the presidential position by the High Court and the Constitutional Court had upheld that judgment as we continue to get reaction. Uh, Savia Kuskuwere joins me now in studio. Mr. Kuskuwere, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. I think the last I heard uh, on social media it was that you believed there was going to be a new dawn in Zimbabwe. There is no new dawn. Your reaction to the yeah. results? Well, the results on their own um, are obviously a process that uh, speaks to the observations that were made by the SADC uh, observer mission, by the AU, and various other OMs that were in our country. And my view, st I still hope that there will be a new dawn because they have been able to pin pinpoint some of the pitfalls that uh, obviously were now, he has given us this reflection of 50 something percent. Um, the violation of the constitution, uh, the voters' role, and so forth. So my belief, and I still hold out, that uh, there will have to be a discussion, there has to be a table, as Zimbabweans and the region, where we're able to deal with some of the issues that have been flagged out. I get a sense when you say that you still believe that there will be a new dawn. Uh, are you talking about perhaps, well, something that we don't know at this stage, is uh, possibly, or if at all, a challenging of these results in Zimbabwe because you lean very heavily on the SADC report which denounced the elections uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, do you believe on that basis? Are you saying that uh, the opposition on the basis of what was announced yesterday should challenge these results? Well, I think the opposition, in all fairness, if they look at that report, first and foremost, they sleepwalked into the election. Uh, secondly, when they heard or had sight of the preliminary findings, it should have given them a caution to say, indeed, if you're going to proceed in this direction, the end will justify, uh, the, the outcomes will be justified by the process, as, as you've seen. And I think uh, when I talk about the new dawn, the opposition should, obviously, if they have picked up anomalies, challenge those in the courts. But I hold very little uh, uh, hope that the courts will grant them what they want. Should they do so, it would be great. But based also on the OMS, the Observer Mission Reports, oh. we should therefore be able to comprehensively uh, go through a diagnostic process and say, what is it that we must do for our country to get a clean bill of health, that our elections are declared free, fair, and credible. Mm -hmm. But as it stands, all the observers have withheld the credibility issue, which impacts negatively on our desire to get out of the sanctions that we're in, in our desire to re-engage the world. President Chisano has been doing a good job to try and get Zimbabwe back onto the international table, but it's contingent upon us also having provided an election that is judged credible. So this is now an elephant in the room, whether one likes it or not. Until Do you think the on list, this basis, uh, uh, what is your view then on that SEDEC report? Of course, it denounced well, the election. It's, it's, a, it's a very brave report, I yeah. must say. Uh, and in fact, when you invite people, you don't expect them to come to praise you. If you invite them to observe, they observed and they wrote their report. Now, what are the next steps? That report will be taken to the SEDEC Trade Chairperson, uh, HH in Zambia, or will take it to the SEDEC Summit. And from my point of view, I think this was a very, very uh, defining moment. And that's when I say it's a new dawn. For the first time, Sadak has been able to really get to the grips with the situation, get to grips and write a report as nearly accurate as is possible. The challenge around our constitution, the voters' role, the intimidation, use of funds, and all those things. Do you think of, on that basis, should the opposition use that report to challenge the outcome of this election that have a positive outcome, you think? If, if it were me, I hold, because uh, it's, 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 I think it's a very solid report. Do you think, um, from where we are now, with these election results having been announced, the Triple C has the capacity to be 
a viable and strong opposition in Zimbabwe? Well, I'm not their spokesperson. I'm not asking but, but you I'm to sure, be from where you I'm sit. I'm sure they should be able to use their numbers to push the national agenda forward. I think they have received a very a considerable uh, number of votes from the people, and you can't ignore that. But what I think is important is to go beyond the binary of these political parties. Look at the bigger challenge of our country. Yep. How do we lift our country out of the economic problems that we are having? How do we really develop a political system that is all embracing, where we have diversity of opinion, but it's not enmity, where we really bring Zimbabwe back to basics. That is the clarion call. So it goes beyond these political parties. Do you it's think about wisdom yeah. at the leadership level. Do you think anything different then? I think in the broader scheme of things, you're, you're absolutely correct. To talk about the economic challenges that Zimbabwe is facing, do you think anything will happen differently this time with President Mnangagwa at the helm? Well, I have my doubts about Nangagwa's leadership capacity, and this is why I challenge him. Uh, however, this is what we are now faced with, this is situation, but this situation cannot be viewed in isolation of the regional observations. What I'm holding on to is the importance of Zimbabwe being able to move and walk in tandem with the region. Now, the region has said these elections are null and void. That's what they say, effectively. That's what the report means, mm. okay, when they say it's not credible. Mm. It therefore behaves upon the leadership of Zimbabwe, all of us involved, to say how do we bring back the faith in the region, in our institutions, and our processes for us then to be able to get our country out of the current quagmire. Mm. Now, Nangagwai has a challenge of arrogance, if I'm able to use this word, and to say, Whatever it takes, I will just do what I want. As long as he's president, as long as somebody has put that chain around him and this cuff, he'll do anything. But that is not what the country is all about. The country is about the millions of our people who are disenfranchised, millions of our people who are in the diaspora, who want to have a new day in Zimbabwe, who want to see a new dawn, new hope, and go back to the country. I can dare say to you, my sister, many of the Zimbabweans were packing their bags, ready to go back home to participate and play and have a new country. That is the hope Zimbabwean political leadership must bring, with or without elections. Mm. We need to look beyond the elections, look beyond the disputes, and still say, how do we make Zimbabwe a viable state for all those who live in it? You were disqualified, of course, from uh, uh, challenging uh, President Mnangagwa in this uh, election. Um, what happens for you now? I remain a political player. Um, I will continue to fight. I mean, my case is a testament to the very difficult political election terrain we have in Zimbabwe. How do you go to court to disqualify your competitor? I mean, elsewhere, people are actually encouraged to play a part in politics. But when they identify one person and say, no, we don't want it, this is the, the political gerrymandering. This is where the rigging begins. Mm. When you say this one will alter what I think I'll get because you'll knock me out. And so you fight. So you believed you'd knock him out? No, I'm not going to go for me. I'm, I'll have dealt with him nicely, cleanly. Very clean. Clean operation. He knows it. Yeah. You are, I know. If I had the chance to campaign and sell my value proposition, I mean, what did the Mnangagwa sell? Except singing, uh, pieces of chicken, and so forth. There was no, there even a manifesto, there's no manifesto. What really decided this election, if I were to call it an election, the sham election, was the pushing of people, uh, the first people, uh, telling people in the special villages, Mashal and Central and other provinces, mm -hmm. go vote like that, mm -hmm. whilst they're hiding under the trees. Mm -hmm. It's not about people freely deciding but they are being cajoled in a given direction. And that's unfortunate, really. So what can you do then on the sidelines? You say you'll continue to be a political player no, we, in Zimbabwean we, politics. What can you do from the sidelines then to talk about not just uh, um, the fight goes on? That's what you say, the fight the goes on. We but moreover so, what should be for the betterment of the lives of the people of Zimbabwe? I will hold on to the Sadak report. 
is a very important piece. It's a good starting point. Why do I say that? Because the resolution of the Zimbabwean question will require the regional support. We will be going to meet President of Zambia, who is chair of the Troika. I'll be going to also see the heads of state who have produced this report and say to them, yes, you will be told other stories, but this paper, this report is so essential if we've got to resolve the Zimbabwean question. Why do I say that? Because if we don't, and Zimbabwe remains a cancerous uh, nation nearby, the exodus of our people in the neighboring states will continue unabated. So if we've got to resolve the Zimbabwean question, the credibility of the election, which is being doubted by the region, must be a certain point. So you will push for these elections to be declared null and void on the basis of this report. Yeah, exactly. That's what is there. And why was I disqualified? Why should I therefore support a process that disqualified me? And illegally so. This election did not bring on board all those who wanted to contest because the incumbent decided to tailor Mac his opponents. Now, it therefore means that the result, in my view, is null and void because the essential requirements by the SADC guideline on democratic elections, the processes fall short of those expectations. Now, if you are arguing with facts, what are you going to use as a basis? So the outcomes that we are dealing with were already reflected by the monitors. They said, no, 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 wait a minute. There's a problem in this process. Mm. So whatever the numbers, I'm not worried about what numbers, whether somebody got 67, 52, that's not an issue. The issue is that the process that yielded those numbers, the credibility of exactly, the process. was already compromised. Xavier Kusukuwere, thank you very much indeed. We appreciate your time.